Hello. Hello, future everyone. Who right now is no one. I'm speaking only to the people of the future. So, I have to make a grouch mask, which is like a Grinch mask, but not copywritten. But also, I don't want it to be that character. I want it to be a, like a scary version of that character. Like, let's say the Grinch was bit by a werewolf. What he turns into would be the monster that I want to do. And it, it's not huge, the modifications that I'm doing, but uh, I think they'll be fun. So, I have an orc mask, and I've already clipped the ears off of it, so I'll be fixing this and, and covering that up. And uh, the Grinch has a very different nose than this, so I'm going to take this off and get that out of the way. I'm using this mask as a base. And one thing I do really enjoy is modifying different masks to make them something else entirely. Uh, so my wife is actually um, going to be <coughs> reading comments. She hasn't read me that anyone says hello yet, but I'm sure she will because <laughs> I don't know what she's doing over there. Slacking off, I'm sure. All right, so I'm just getting things smoother. I like the teeth. I like this mouth. You know, so this did have, you know, nostrils on it. And I know I want to cover this up, so I'm going to use some shop towel, which is nice and thick, and some contact cement. I'm going to build up that Dr. Susie snout type look. What I know, I got to cover the ears too. I might as well get these ears glued up. I have rebuilt whole sections of heads and whatnot. Grouch is a non-copyrighted version of a Grinch. It's also scarier because this is for, this is kind of just a wink and a nod to the Grinch. I wanted to do a hairy green monster that was Grinch-like, but scary, you know. The Grinch has a cartoon lovability about him. I'd like to make this guy darker. Straight edges are really picked up easily by the human eye. So whenever I use paper towel or anything, I rip off all the edges so that I just have nice pieces of hideable, blendable edges. And also when I rip these, it exposes the little tiny fibers in there which are all pressed down. And those little tiny fibers allow me to blend them easier. It, it makes more surface area for gluing. Is he gonna have a No, no, he's gonna be a little rougher. No, I just, I just said that. It's, a, it's like the Grinch, but it's a grouch, it's a monster. The Grinch is like kind of mean and not nice. A grouch will eat your face off. 
It's like, if a Grinch were a werewolf, it'd be a grouch. Did I make it up? Yes. Do I want to get sued by Disney? No. Glad I was able to keep this one. I am making another crop this time. Devil mask. Tell you what, these blue shop towels are definitely going to be your friend. I apologize if you're hearing beeps. My phone is, uh, I mistakenly have notifications turned on. So, so yeah. And at least a portion of this video will be everyone here waiting for glue to dry, which is very exciting. I, I really enjoy taking one mask and turning it into another, you know, especially if you can, you know, give it an upgrade. And this is an orc mask that I sculpted uh, seven, eight years ago, five, six years ago, something like that. And, you know, to be able to give it new life over and over again, it's been a werewolf, it's been a bunch of different things. That's a fun part of the process for me. Is that like watching paint dry? Watching glue dry is like watching paint dry. They are similar. I thought that was an orc. This was an orc. It will not just be an orc when I am finished. You should do my little airbrush to dry this. What are you drinking? That is a sun kissed. I don't do near as much caffeine as I used to. So. So it's a sun kissed. You might notice that I just took this napkin and now I've covered up his nose or where his nose was. So it's got a, there's no hole in the mask now. I, you know, there was contact cement on the other side of the paper towel, and there is contact cement on the mask, and now I'm doing this outside so I get other things to stick to it. So I'm going to be building up from here. I like the cheekbones. I like the uh, brow structure. Um, they're not super ungrinch like I should say. But I just have to get some of these other things in line. Here's an ear. You know, it's all been cut open so that I can have because the Grinch doesn't have any ears. square paper towel down here that you guys couldn't see. And I'm using my airbrush. Nothing in it, just air. Instead of going, I'm just an efficient use of technology. Can you make a zombified March hair? I could, yes. Yes. Are you asking will I or are you asking can I? Turned into one of those people. But yeah, sure you could do that. I've made a couple monster rabbit masks. Okay, so that ear is now covered up. But there's only glue on one side of it, so I want to put glue on the other side. Uh, contact cement is very similar to rubber cement. 
It is a material with um, some kind of an accelerant in it in order to keep it being a suspension. And as that, the stuff that stinks evaporates out of it, you're left with a rubber-like substance, just like rubber cement. Remember me, Alan, from the haunt convention? I spoke of it to you. It's just randomness sauce. Which I don't. I don't remember the name randomness sauce, but which haunt convention? awesome. And which haunt convention? Because yeah, we uh, we hit up a couple of those. Was it easy to get neon green hair? Uh, it's actually surprisingly easy to get neon green hair. Should you try it, I think you would be very surprised at how easy it is. Okay, yes, I remember. And you were very worried you were going to mess it up. Okay, see now these ears are going away. And these edges, they blend right in, so it's nice and easy. Did you work on Frankenstein's Army? No, I don't do movies. I do haunted houses. So I'm not a movie guy. I am not a failed movie special effects artist who makes things for haunted houses. I'm a haunted house special effects artist. Period. Yeah. Now, I have had a couple masks or costumes I've made be used in movies. But that, I was not like the guy on set. I have a great respect for what they do. Their budgets are often way better than mine. But um, I love what I do. I don't want to do what they do. In movies, there's a kind of a trend of you work on something for six months, it gets seen on screen for six seconds, and you never get to see it again. And I don't know. I My monsters are my darling. Another one. What I get to do is I get to make something, you know, keep the mold and then twist it up and sell it again, and you know, it's just different. And also, for the most part, I get to make what I want to make. Every now and then I get a customer who says, Will you make this for me? But normally I make something and say, Hey, you guys want this? That's that's how I prefer to do it. My ghost idea was for a movie, but it was never made. That's Jordan Ezra. Is that the Sheet Ghost? Sheet Ghost. Sheet Ghost. Some of your design stuff that you sent me looked a bit like the Ghost in the Frighteners when it was coming through the wall, which I actually really enjoyed that movie. So, I'm going to cover up these ears one more time, because that's going to be not easy, but I don't have to think about it. I know what to do, because all I'm doing is covering them up. The face is going to take a little bit of design. But you can see it's actually, you know, it's coming along pretty quickly. I mean, right now it's a Voldemort orc. If I you get this all painted, you know, that nose is completely gone. 
the Grinch nose has a very particular structure, and that is what I'm going to emulate on this Grouch mask. Two more pieces ready to go. Any questions on the process of what I'm doing? Not yet. This monster will appear in a Dark Hour Haunted House's Wreck the Halls event. Not this weekend, but the weekend after that. Which I believe is the 13th and the 14th. This mask will be appearing in, appearing in Dark Hour Haunted Houses uh, Wreck the Halls event in Plano, Texas. I'm not a Hollywood special effects artist. I'm a haunted house special effects artist. I don't do movies. I do haunted houses uh, and some theme park stuff. I do theme park stuff every now and then. Um, but I do not do movies. I'm not as happy with that process and how those things get done. Is there a monster museum? Um, there, there is a monster museum. That's a weird question to come up. I have a monster museum at Scarborough Fair in Waxahachie, Texas, which starts up in April, right? That's correct. Yeah. Sort of runs April and May. So two layers of paper towel soaked down with contact cement that has dried is actually going to give me a decent thickness. And this is going to have some decent strength as a patch. Is there one type of contact cement you recommend over another? I tend to use Weldwood because it would be easiest for me to get. I, too, am using Weldwood contact cement. And it's easy for me to get. Did you build? I don't believe that I've built for Magic Springs. But I also hate to say this, I can't be sure. A lot of times what happens is I take stuff to a trade show and my stuff gets purchased at a trade show, and I don't always know where it's going or what's going to happen with it. Okay, so I'm going to try a little, I'm going to try and do a technique here that I've used before. Hello, Ezekiel. Hello, Ezekiel. Great for doing hair and making stuff. Yes, it does. Hello? Thank you, Will. Hey, you build for Not Scary Farm? Uh, I have made some things for Not Scary Farm. Actually, a friend of mine, John, was one of the directors out there for a while. And uh, he uh, had me had commissioned a few things from me. Well, you pet the oil, would you?
Okay. So, the technique I'm doing. Said great minds think alike, but I can never be as great as Al. Oh. About the concepts. I uh, I don't even think of myself as great. I think of myself as highly adequate. That's what I hope for. Extreme adequacy. Now, contact cement will eat through this little polycarbonate bottle overnight. Luckily, I'm not going to use it overnight. And I'm just planning on this bottle being thrown away. I'm not sure how well you can see what I'm doing, but I am coating this paper towel with this single action airbrush from Harbor Freight with uh, contact cement. I'm going to use a technique that they use to build Mardi Gras floats called sticky paper. I did a YouTube video on it where I coated big construction paper with contact cement. This is a smaller version. I'm going to prep a few of these. And if I were really awesome, I would have ripped the edges off of this first. Jordan wants to know if you started the ghost yet. No. Um, Right now, I have projects lined up for Transworld, and if, if that pops up as a commission, it's something that I would do, or if, you know, I need to make a YouTube video and I need a project, I might do something like that, but it's not really on the books until either someone needs me to make it or I need to make it for something that I'm doing. Right now, most of my projects are not sheet ghost centric. Okay, I'm just setting that off to the side while I do another one. Ezekiel, if you're still watching, I greatly appreciate oh my um, the musical project that you helped me out with. Uh, I'm going to send you an email on that here shortly. But uh, I also appreciate you sending me fishing lure stuff. What? Yeah, he sends me messages every now and then. He's got a company who makes fishing lures, or a friend of his. What? And. That's uh, great. I just love them. If you ever make it to Australia, you will have to fish. Yes, I will definitely go fishing. <laughs> who knows what's in Australia? If and when I make it to Australia. I think the best bet of getting me to Australia is, is a cruise ship. Oh. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Flying in a plane for 15 hours doesn't sound like fun. But if you got there and you could go fishing, that would be pretty amazing. Yeah. Are those paper towels any special kind, or can any old paper towel be okay? Any old paper towel is fine, but I prefer the blue shop paper towels because I like their fibers, and they don't have any kind of pattern stamped into them, and many paper towels have this weird pattern stamped into them. So that is something to look out for. Because, you know, if, you, if I laid down that earpiece flat like that and it had a flower stamped in it, well, that's going to show up. 
No monster wants a flower a year. Now, contact cement is not the fastest in the world. Um, if I use a spray adhesive for the Super, uh, 3M Super 77, this would be a faster process of building up and drying. However, it would break down a lot faster because the Super 77 isn't very heat tolerant. And the contact cement can take heat a lot better Yeah, I make puppets. I love making puppets. Okay. Well, very cool. Yeah, anything to hide that straight edge is nice. See, this is my first piece that I did. It has contact cement on both sides. Set this guy over here. I gotta clean my shop. Um, and now that it's dry-ish, see it, that has the the contact scent has actually reinforced this. It's a lot harder to rip the edges, and if I squeeze it together, it will break, rip, not break. It'll stick together. That's what I meant to say. I want to make a shape that looks kind of like a half moon. I don't need it to be exact, but I want it to be thicker in the middle and then, you know, come down to points. You know, like that. I'm hoping this Adika says I have organized a few gents already if you ever make it <laughs> Jordan would like to know how do you make the boogeyman what, what, what's the boogeyman I don't know what you mean So you know what, I'm not going to use the spray right now. I'm going to actually go back to the brush. So I'm coating the face. I need, remember I only have one layer here on the face. I got to do a couple more. What I think I'm going to do is build up the ridges of the nose and then put paper towel over that to smooth it out. I do one more of those. I've never layered up contact cement that much. Will it shrink after curing? Not much. And uh, contact cement, it, it doesn't really go through a curing process so much as a drying process. And it, what, what happens is it's evaporating away. What is in it is evaporating away. And as soon as that accelerant or whatever you want to call it in there goes away, well, then it's just that plastic that was suspended in that suspension. I like that. And I'm 
that, that's just my understructure, you know? Well, certainly. I'll do one more of those. Alexa, what time is it? My goal for this guy was 10 p.m. I wanted to be painting him or whatever at 10 p.m. Let's do one more full length piece. This will be a big one. more crumpling this one than I than I am rolling. Remember how the Grinch's nose has those ridges? So I'm kind of emulating. Also need to make a little nose for him. Let's get these guys set up. Yeah, you know what? There's some. I think the Grinch is on the list of things that just didn't need to be remade. And then there was another Grinch with Benedict Cumberpatch, wasn't there? Just a few years ago. Jordan says the Boogeyman is a mass of insects and serpents bound together with burlap. Where did where did this description of the boogeyman come from, Jordan? What mythos is that from? Because the term boogeyman comes from the word bogey. And a bogey is a like an English goblin type character which uh, attacks children. There's a whole class of monsters from folklore called nursery bogeys. And their whole job is to scare kids. And you use them to keep kids from doing certain things. Like Jenny Greenteeth, she was a nursery bogey. Used, she, you know, she was a witch who lived in the water who drowned children. And she was used to keep kids from playing in the water. Ezekiel says, a loogie bogle. Logie and Jordan says Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, you mean like Oogie Boogie? Oogie Boogie. Okay, I got gotcha. you. How would I make him? That would be a sculpture. That's what I would do. I love your projects. This is Charles Marquette. Awesome. Thank you. I too love my projects. Now, all these little scrap pieces that I tore off, I'm going to take them down and ball them up. I'm going to hope. Yeah, that's a good size. That's almost a good size nose. Like this piece here, too. So I want my nose to be pretty round, kind of buttony. And we want it to be its own thing.
I want to make all this feel like it's together. I want to almost feel like it's just like perched on top. And that'll be a very unscary part of it. This goofy-esque nose. You are a great artist. Uh, well, that's very kind of you. I don't know that I'm a great artist. All right, so we are coming up on some magic times. Made a little nose, a little piece of sticky paper here. I'm gonna do several pieces over this nose area to get it where I want it. Now I'm ripping off all the edges. I'm, I'm worried about that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good ways to make an Oogie Boogie. It's a nice, versatile design, and I thought it was a wonderful, uh, a nice build. The, the, just the design work on it uh, from Nightmare Before Christmas was actually very good. I used glow-in-the-dark paint to make him black-white reactive. If you haven't seen the movie Constantine, at one point he is assaulted by a demon who is made up of a bunch of insects. And if you encased that demon in a burlap bag, I think that creature would be a lot like Oogie Boogie. As soon as I put down a piece of paper towel. Yes, I'm smoothing out the design, but I also made a dry spot that I have to re-wet with contact cement in order to get things to stick to it. And if you're gonna spray contact cement through an airbrush like this, make sure it's a fairly new can because this stuff does thicken with time. And this is, this is fine on that verge of being too thick to spray. So just keep that in mind. What is the blue stuff? The blue stuff is just shop paper towels. Like, you know, you buy a three pack of shop paper towels from Home Depot everywhere. Harbor Freight's got them. Everybody's got them. You get a paper towel. You get a paper towel. Check under your seats. Jordan would like to know, how would you put Oogie Boogie on steroids? I would give him hooks. Hooks, huh? Like, like Hellraiser Oogie Boogie? That has some interest. Um, Alan is more than an artist. He is a great teacher as well. A uh, Oogie Boogie. He's from Larry Hughes. You know, I, I think a lot could be done with his head shape and things. Um, but also, I think I would kind of cross, if I had to amp him up quite a bit, I would cross him with Jabba the Hutt. Um, so that he has a nice, like, slime, like, slug body behind him. And he moves on his hands, you know, and has, like, a snake movement that way. And then... Uh, yeah, and I think he would have a seam right down his chest, and he could open up and then let the bugs out, or, you know, raise up over someone, open his chest, and put them inside of himself, so all the bugs devour him. We plan to come to Brazil to do workshops. Um, while that sounds lovely, 
Um, I don't know of any haunted houses in Brazil right now. I did go to Puerto Rico, but right now that is the furthest south we have gone in the name of haunt education. I just finished a latex mask modification. I used latex soaked cotton for a little more sculptability, rendering the video on YouTube now. Yeah, uh, I do that a lot too. Um, if I did that, I would not be finished in two hours. Uh, the dry time alone takes a long time. So that is why I have opted to use this method. I like to work fast. Working fast is one of the tenets of how I operate. So it's almost against my religion to do something that takes a long time. So if there is a faster way to do the same thing, that's what I want to do. And the nature of this character allows me to do this. It's not one where I'm going to really, you know, run into trouble looks wise if it is not 100% sculpted. I'm going to move over here to the other side because I need some time to dry. Put a piece of paper towel down and I am hitting it with contact cement. I want to have wet areas exposed. Because contact cement, the way that it works is you put it on both sides. Only when it's on both sides and then both sides have some time to dry will it tack up perfectly. People who don't like using contact cement never read the label. And those seams really kind of go away. You know, that ripped edge, it's actually pretty hard for your eye to pick that seam back up. Especially once I paint this guy. Alexa, what time is it? The time is 8.49 p.m. 8. Have a good night. 49. Are the teeth staying? Teeth are staying. That's why I'm kind of working around them. No crumpus walk for the hopses tonight? Uh, no, I've got some projects to finish up for dark hour. We went to a lovely uh, event in Plano last night where I got to be a crumpus and, uh, and I got to perform. And then tomorrow morning, pretty early, I have a uh, event for dark hour, which is one of my favorites for the year. It is the Christmas with Krampus event where Dark Hour and Biddy Mold Supply get together and provide pictures with Krampus for um, anyone who wants to come in. It's a free event. So people can come in and get a picture taken with Krampus just like you would with Santa. And it's a toy drive. And it's a toy drive for Toys for Tots. And there's a car show outside. It's, uh, it's, it's just a, a wonderful event. It, it's good for me to and hang out with kids and be nice-ish. 
Jordan would like to know, how would you reimagine Sully from Monster Hunter? That's the blue one. I would I would go more Wendigo with him. Make him thin. Make him a thin blue hairy monster. And uh this is where he's hungry all the time. I love the idea, which I suppose is a the Christmas tree compass. We need that here. That is our beauty at that. To me, it was simply that um Once you get to a certain age, it's not really fun to get your picture taken with Santa. And, you know, he, he may not completely align with your interests, but a picture with Krampus, you know, that's something. That's fun. Ezekiel says, I can't believe how much Krampus has spread. I have seen it grow like crazy, and it started with you, Vermont. Well, I worked very hard to spread Krampus. But when it's something cool like that, and it's, you know, and it's visually interesting, and it's got a history that people just don't know, um, it's pretty easy to get it to spread. So I, uh, I lit a Krampus fire several years ago, maybe 10 years ago. And the first year, I took Krampuses to Transworld, I think was 2010, maybe? Maybe 2008, one of those. Okay. And, uh, you know, no one knew what they were. <laughs> I had to, had to explain and they didn't sell. So. That looks a little wetter than I would like over here in the mouth. If I want it to bond, it's gotta be dry. Dry-ish. I would like to know, how would you change Cookie Monster? I would not change Cookie Monster. Because Jim Henson knows what he's doing. And Cookie Monster is kind of, he's made for kids. I know that at one point in time they tried to change the Cookie Monster to make him like vegetables. And I thought that was an atrocity. Probably because... I hate vegetables. My daughters wore Krampus horns, half masks to school the other day and educated her new mini teacher. All the kids thought it was cool. That can be cool. That's awesome. That's very cool. Yeah, Krampus is pretty awesome. It's a, it, it certainly makes Christmas more fun. A little patch for the corner of that mouth would be good. Jordan wants to know who is Krampus. Okay, so Krampus is a creature that is very common in Austria and in Germany and uh, pretty much every tree that touches the Alps, the Alps mountain range has a Krampus. And on December 5th, that is Krampusnacht. And on December 5th, the Krampus comes down from the mountains into the village and they um, terrorize the bad children in order to scare them straight. If there's no hope for those children to become good kids, then the Krampus will actually kidnap them, take them away, and eat them or throw them into a lake of fire, depending upon where you've heard the story. And... Uh, it, it is a figure, oftentimes, you know, uh, Krampus will also go around with St. Nicholas, and while St. Nicholas gives presents, the Krampus punishes bad kids. So, 
similar. Uh, Krampus is, he punishes bad kids. But there's a lot of figures who do that. That's not just Krampus. You know, there's, it seems like every version of Santa has a version of Krampus or a bell snickel or something in order to make kids behave. I'm just getting all this to lay down, making these seams go away. Oh, well, thank you very much, and uh, you should certainly do it. Are there a lot of prop makers out there? Is that a, is it a big thing? Jordan would like to know, will this have a bodysuit? Yes, it'll have a green, hairy bodysuit. And the bodysuit is actually all ready to go. And I get to make two of these for Dark Hour, so that's why I kind of wanted to get one done today. Because I wanted to make sure I have time to get both of them done before Friday. Remember, I got I got put the paper towel on, then I got to wet it. Because I want it all to, uh, I want it all to be sticky for itself. Should be wearing gloves. This contact cement is not exactly fun to get on your hands. Get to see you work on the suit. No, because the suit is already finished. I will bring it over and show you. <laughs> Harry suit. Arms, body, ready to go. Okay. It was also nice to step away and take a look at this from a little bit of a distance. Sometimes you see things from a distance that you don't see up close. Oh, put you back. Ding. There we go. Oh, we make monster suits here. We do all the hair work. Um, we make crompuses and werewolves and all that. So, what kind of puppets have you made? That is from Jordan. Boy, made a lot of puppets, Jordan. Um, just made a lot of puppets. Um, 
lychee style hand puppets. I have made um, all kinds of stuff. Um, crab monsters, moray eel. We did a pirate haunted house where there was, I painted a wall like a reef with all these little holes in it and the actor was behind the wall. I could put his moray eel puppet out through there. So, all right, so what I want to do now is I want to meld this nose onto the face. But this blue paper towel is a little too thick. Uh, I'm going to wrap it once with a little strip of this blue paper towel, but then I'm going to take toilet paper and I'll put toilet paper over it to give it a gentle skin, but not bulk it out. Gene Sanford says greetings, hope all is well. Hello, things are good. Now that little bit of paper towel is going to help hold this on. close here. Uh, if you guys can see what's happening, it's hard to see past the colors. I know, you know, but now you can see that he has a, a nose built up a lot more like the Grinch. I've got those bulges and wrinkles on the sides. I'll accent those with paint. His ears are gone. So I'm going to cover his nose with a little more skin. We have to go grab some paper towel out of the shop restroom. was in the restroom to grab toilet paper, I saw Kleenex, even better. Because Kleenex is smooth, it doesn't have the uh, stuff, the little dimples and things printed on that most toilet paper does. These are several ply. I only need one ply of them. Now this is also so thin that uh, I'm only going to use one layer of it and I'm not going to wet it. Normally with contact cement, everything has to be wet. This will get wet, but it's going to, I'm just going to let it soak through. I just wanted that nose to be a little smoother because the nose was kind of made out of balled up paper. metal tool here 
to uh, smooth this out. Metal doesn't have like splinters and stuff that might grab, like a popsicle stick might grab this. Have you ever worked on a leshy, like an undead? I know what leshies are. Uh, oh, you leshy. mean a? Did you, work, did you say leshy or did I you say? I leshy, but he's spelling it many different ways. It's, it's a lich. Lich, undead sort of. Yes, uh, I have made a lich actually. Um, it's kind of a, a you know. Wizard stuff. Normally, they're really close to skeletal. You see, wife. I know that you don't know what a lich is, so I will tell you. A wizard, when he gets very powerful, can put his soul into objects, which is then called a phylactery. And in order, and then that way he can stay. He can keep from dying. He dies, but he's undead. So, the witch's phylactery, the, the lich's phylactery, uh, has to be destroyed for you to kill him. It's got to be an item of value. It could be like a big gem or something like that. Jeremy Porter says hello. Hello, Jeremy Porter. In Harry Potter, they called phylacteries horcruxes. I don't know why. And I just thought I would put a little bit of this tissue paper on for some skin texture to see if I like it. And if I don't like it, well, I'm screwed because I glued it down. I don't mind it, but I don't like it enough to uh, do it to the other side. All right, so this, I need to dry this. This has to get set up and dried and ready so that uh, I can paint it. If I don't let this dry all the way before I paint it, then what will happen is that, you know, this has a smell, and that tells you it's kind of letting off some gases or whatever. And uh, so if I don't let this dry before I paint it, then those gases are going to come up through the paint, and that's what causes bubbling in a paint job. The bubbles are gases from a layer underneath, kind of trying to come out. Sealed in. I'm happy with that. I think, you know, up here is pretty dry. This nose area is not very dry. I'm going to do things differently than I normally do. Normally, I would never use a spray or an aerosol to base coat a mask because the accelerants in it aren't necessarily great for the latex. But I'm going to use leak seal, which will put another layer onto this for strength um, as a base coat. And I'm just gonna do it over this while it's not necessarily the driest in the world, but we'll grab a heat gun and dry this a little more. All right. So my wife and I are watching The Mandalorian, and she is in love with Baby Yoda. Please, don't give any spoilers, because we're not as far into it as most people. Because we just don't watch a lot of television.
Okay, that is much drier. It would be really awesome if this were all the way dry. But I'm... Alexa, what time is it? It's 9.11 p.m. She made me look at her. So I, if I want to get this done on time, I have 49 minutes. You can put blanks on hand or just make them as you need them. Normally, I make them as I need them, but I have a few on hand right now. This was my big Krampus making season, and I never know what I'm going to make a Krampus out of. So, I do have a few of these on hand. I think everyone's in love with Baby Yoda. That's what candlesticks, and candlesticks This is Flex Seal. From the obnoxious TV commercials. It's also called Solvent Pot. Called what? Solvent Pot. Trapping. Oh, yes. Bubbles, especially in fair coat, I restore cards. Oh, yeah. Get in your pot. Any easy way to get wax based clay out of a narrow spot on a mold. Man, what's the mold made out of? <laughs> what's the mold made out of? But probably heat is your answer. Kind of melt it out. Not so much heat that you hurt your mold. Uh, this stuff also dries pretty fast. I like it for that. Uh, I do not recommend doing this on a latex mask. This will shorten the life of this mask. The solvents in this will eat this latex a little bit. Okay? It's not something that I do all the time. But realistically, I only need this mask for two years or so. This won't live a real long time. And in a haunt setting, you can get two years of use out of the mask, that's pretty good. And now, our grouch mask is all one piece again. And I think I'm gonna let this well, I'm not going to let it. I'm not going to let it dry. I'm going to make it dry. So you always go look at the back. So I've got a cheekbone over here that I haven't painted yet. Back of this eye socket. Side of that nose. So I didn't see it from the other angle. But I like that this paint has a little bit of thickness. It's go. It uh, adds a little bit of dimensionality. It put because it the way. On it puts a texture on with it. So those areas of plain paper towel got some te texture after all. Avoid directly heat gunning your can of uh, contact cement. Says what? Hydrocal 30. Ultra Cal 30. Okay, there's Hydrocal or there's Ultra Cal 30. Um, Hydrocal does not take heat well. Ultracal does. If your mold is Ultracal 30, 
then uh, you can actually put it in the oven at like 225 and uh, put it upside down, put a tray under it, and then you can melt that clay right out of there. So yeah, uh, I have this mask built. The build is done. Now it's time for the paint. And I have no doubt that I can get this painted in about 20, 25 minutes. If I can get this dry and leave me enough time for that. I didn't plan on hairing it tonight. I'll hair it probably tomorrow, tomorrow evening. I mean, I can build the other one and hair this one. That's dry. Look how you put your own twist on this kind of hair. Well, I don't want to make licensed characters. I'd really rather make my own stuff. Um, the holiday season, it's so rich with stories and things that, uh, People, if they come to an experience and they don't see at least a wink and a nod towards characters that they know, you know, they, they, they come away thinking it lacks something. Okay. I feel we are dry enough to move on with my style of painting. Hey, wife, mm -hmm. could you come and tell a quick story while I prep some paints? Prepping paint. It's not a bad wife is sneaking up behind the camera. Oh, my goodness. So if your sound is off, you'll think I've abandoned you. <laughs> but it's not so. So last night, we went to the Plano Dickens Fest celebration, which was a, uh, a C. Uh, tree lighting and gathering and uh, for the first time, that was the first time last night, wasn't it? That we went? Yes. Yeah, well, with Krampus. With Krampus. In the past, uh, the city of Plano, which is where Dark Hour is located, has not allowed Krampus to visit. And we're in kind of in the Bible Belt. We're in North Texas. And so, you know, it's still not, not a lot of people knew who Krampus was. This year they allowed us to come, and we brought four Krampus, one evil snowman, and uh, a Christmas tree costume that jumps out at people. And they, if you, if I had known that there was going to be the reception that we were going to receive, I'd have had my, my phone ready with some video, because when we turned a corner, and these four Krampus, Krampi, Krampus, um, there's been a big debate <laughs> online, and what's the plural of Krampus? came around the corner and started walking out into the town square where people were all gathered waiting for the tree lighting, uh, I would have had my phone ready because they were absolutely just destroyed the people. And I mean in a good way. People were thrilled. Uh, of course, there were some that were, were running in fear, but they were running in fear laughing. They were not truly afraid. We're talking teenage girls who, oh, hooray, it's time for me to be scared and ran off. So, uh, which made for great... Uh, uh, attention, but truly no one was scared because our actors were very, very cognizant of the fact that 
you know, these are, this is not a, uh, not everybody knows who Krampus is. And if you think about Christmas and the Christmas season, the holiday season, there's a lot of ghost stories. And there's actually a very dark season. Uh, ghosts and, and uh, spiritual things that are, are not all cheerful. So, uh, you know, we kind of kind of have to ease into it. But truly, it was the best entrance I have ever seen. And uh, they loved it. There were some people who were not too sure, but I was very surprised because I was taking pictures and I was kind of blending in with the crowd so I could hear what everyone was saying. And the amount of people in, you know, Plano, Texas, <laughs> you just don't expect it to be that knowledgeable, who knew who Krampus was, was very surprising. And I think that that would be possible uh, 10 years ago, heck, five years ago. Uh, that people knew who Krampus was. And it was very well received. Uh, I had to be very careful to uh, not upstage the Victorian carol singers who were lovely and charming, but, you know, you're not going to look at the Victor Victorian carol singers when a, you know, so a big band of Krampus are walking by. So it was a really, boy, I don't know really any other way to uh, say it, but it's almost a, like a victorious evening last night that everyone was uh, was very re very receptive and you just don't always expect that so you know there's always a chance because they're not going to be happy with the fact that they allowed you to be there that was a big deal because we've been you know, trying for years you've been trying and they weren't ready and this year they gave it a shot and you guys were super respectful uh, professional and any anybody who wanted a picture got a picture and they were absolutely covered up so it was a I don't know. Felt like a kind of like a door opened a little bit last night. Oh, I think so for sure. And it was uh, very positive, which you have to be careful with that because you know, we've had our season in many ways. Halloween is over, and now it's Christmas, and you, you kind of have to. And a lot of people say, "Ah, Christmas infringes on Halloween." It's not a turf war, but there's a you know, you have to be careful with that. And you so know what? If you're a Halloween person, and you know, Halloween makes you happy and you want to celebrate Halloween all year, great. That goes for Christmas people too. If they want to celebrate Christmas all year, don't tell them it's too early. You don't have to hurt their fun for you to have yours. Did I cut you off, honey? No, it was a good night. It was a good night. It was a really good night. And uh, so you're never sure how that's going to go, but I think it went very well. I have two greens here. One is a dark green. And that is the one I'm doing first. And uh, I'll do a couple coats of this nice dark green before I go into a <laughs> lighter green. It's looking pretty decent. I was wondering what color that sealer stuff would be. Uh, favorite color for intrinsic shading of latex to do an old mask to distortion. Uh, you know what? It comes with uh, the, the sealer comes in, the flex seal comes in clear. It comes in clear, white, black, and I think a brown. But uh, I always buy the black because I dry brush almost everything I make. I start with a dry brush, and then I'll go back and I'll do use the airbrush for some shading. But uh, yeah, so black is a is what I almost base everything in. Therefore, it's a good color for me to get in this sealer. My wife is Scandinavian, this is Ezekiel, so she has a belief anything before December 1st is so, super bad luck for Christmas. Well, that is uh, also perfectly valid. It was just a very nice evening and very positive. It was a wonderful evening. And you, you, you know, it could have even gone the other way. You know what, though, in all honesty, if if we had gotten there and hundreds of people had held hands and sang hymns and charged us and tried to get us out, we also made a memory for them that way too. But they did it. It's amazing how many different ways there are for people to have fun. You know, and if sometimes Sometimes it's your job to remind them that life is fun and a little dark. And sometimes you have to, you get to remind them that they're powerful 
by thinking they exercised you from their village. Either way, you're making them feel better about themselves. The world needs monsters. There's a reason. There's a reason. It's put out with Halloween. It's payback when I put Krampus in my yard for Christmas decorations. <laughs> well, you showed them. Ezekiel says, I love the education. So many cultures and stories and variations take time to learn. It's wonderful. Oh, yeah. I mean, the world's a big place. Uh, there's no way we can understand all of it on the first go round. And see, now that I'm dry brushing, you can see those rolls that I put in under there, they're still there. You know, there's just a skin over it. And when I airbrush, I'll pop those even more. And then I see some underneath of here didn't really get hit very well, but that's okay. Sanford says, Dan, it looks badass, Alan. Love the tones and shading. Hi. Well, we are very early in our painting process here. Uh, I'm hoping it looks more and more badass as we go. I'm kind of bringing it up to a, a good green color, but this is a darker green. This is a base. Um, we'll have a much lighter, brighter green going on after this. But I want to get this up to a certain level. And then the other green will go on top of making sure it's pretty much even. It is. This is my other color green, very yellow green. I'm going to start by adding it into this. So I got about 50, 50 of these two greens. And this will be my next color. And I'm going to bring him up to a brighter tone than he needs to be. Uh, he will be brighter than Grinch Green when I am done. Because what kind of lighting am I going to lighting am I going to put him in? I know it's going to be uh, a darker environment. It won't be full light. So why not bring him up a little bit extra so he gets seen? I am blessed. I work with Jake Farmer as a uh, lighting director at Dark Hour. Uh, he's actually my assistant director. And he thinks of things very differently than I do, which is wonderful to have in someone you work with. Um, but, you know, and we, we know each other's style. If, uh, <coughs> if he were an over lighter, you know, then I would paint differently. But I think we, we keep enough darkness in the show to keep it scary and enough light where you do think you're getting the full experience and you're not even aware of how much your brain is filling in that you don't see. I just put Christmas decorations on my Halloween decorations and tell people it is Nightmare Before Christmas inspired. Well, that is one way to do it. You're a good man, Alan, and Halloween Well, that was very kind. I also put a tall white Christmas tree with a skull on top and call it the Ghost of Christmas Future. Nice. 
See how we're coming into green? We're greening up. Michael says that he does Halloween and his wife does Christmas and Easter. It's a good way to go. Good way to do it. Ezekiel refers to his wife on social media as the Scandinavian princess. Did I, <laughs> did I say that right, Ezekiel? I, th I think that's what you say. The Swedish princess? Swedish princess, that's Swedish it. Princess. The Swedish princess. I said yes. I need to buy a black Christmas tree for all my horror pagan ornaments, cobwebs, and candles. Line Cook 4 2006, uh, Jamie Jackson says, LED lights in the eyes would be awesome for that. Uh, that's a possibility. So this, this has to dry a little bit. Uh, I'm a little wet right now, and I'm working wet, so I'm going to hit it with the heat gun, dry up these paints. When paint is wet, all you do is you move it around. You don't actually, you're not painting as much. You're spreading out what you put on. And that's okay if you're trying to make it more translucent but I'm trying to build up color here. And almost all paint darkens as it dries. So you guys can see how much this is getting darker as I'm drying it. It's all wet, what? Yes, I don't want it to wet blend. Yeah, exactly right. Ezekiel says all of us guys are lucky to have princesses. That's true. I don't think you have princesses. No, I don't. <laughs> That's okay. Still think I'm lucky. It's not what you have. <laughs> oh, my goodness, buddy. This kitty. Oh. And this is my last uh, little dry brush with this color. I think I'm going to go <clears throat> with this color straight next. Alexa, what time is it? The time is 9.34 p.m. I don't know exactly what time I started this, but uh, but here we are. I wanted to start at about eight o'clock. I've done about ten o'clock, then I hit my two-hour mark. And that makes me happy. A little bit of this straight yellow green now. I'm going to let it sit there for a second and again dry it out. and haunted hills. <coughs> With new color, I don't know how much is on my brush. So I'm starting not in the center of the face. This is where I want it to be. So now I'll move it around this uh, sculpture. And again, that looks really bright, looks really harsh. 
My brush is maybe a little wetter than I want it to be. <laughs> we have you going on two TVs and a computer. Oh, here. Is that, is that in case you leave the room? <laughs> Even this color, as bright as it is, as it dries, it's going to darken up. But I've got that green underneath. I've got that the deep green underneath. I've got that second green under the, over that, and then over that second green, I've got this color, and that is leaving me with this really nice, bright but dimensional paint job. Branson Hod Hill says, "I would know." Alan doesn't remember me. What? Jeremy Porch says, "You need one of those hair dryers from the salon so you can get it around heat." I don't know about, oh, okay, I got you, like the hood ones that pop down. I was at a store that sold them the other day. I will tell you what is very difficult. What is difficult is when I'm on YouTube, people have YouTube names, and on Facebook, they have Facebook names, and I don't always keep them straight. I don't always remember that this person is this haunted house on YouTube, and then on Facebook, they're this. And many times, I have thought I was interacting with different people. You know, I think there's YouTube people, and you know, it'd be nice if we could all just have the same name <laughs> all the time. That is most assuredly the old fuddy-duddy in me talking. In, you know, 1997, it was never use your real name on the internet. Don't talk to strangers and don't talk to strangers on the internet. It's difficult. Now you use the internet to get a stranger to come and where you are and pick you up so you can get in their car. Times have changed. But it's difficult to, to associate names with a person. Oh, it's so tough. And they show the trans world and say, you know, we talked. Yes, but I don't know who you are. Very few people use their real name. When does the season for Haunters Hangout start up again? When does that happen? Is that May? Or it is in May? Uh, I feel like I'm, they're in February, I feel. They're all offended that I didn't remember them. <laughs> but, no. Between the contact cement and the flex seal fumes, I'm lucky I remember my name. Good stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna get my airbrush ready. Oh, uh, it's kind of ready. Gotta grab a couple more inks. That's scary, Mary. That's yeah. Scary. We said that. Yeah, we did say scary. that. So that darkens as soon as I uh, dry it up. I'm gonna try something a little crazy. Maybe 
day going on. You know, like I was leaving, but I didn't leave with you. Maybe I'm supposed to. Don't show them who this is. Go on. Come here. Whenever my wife and I are in the shop, the cats are much more likely to come in. This is Doyle. He is my buddy. Uh, he is the most dog-like cat I've ever had. When I pull up at the house, he runs over to me to greet me, which is wonderful, and he loves to be picked up and held like this. Like he's, he's having a great time right now. He loves it. All right. But I got to work. I got work to do. One thing, only thing that offends me is I don't see more videos from you. <laughs> oh, I see. Well. Uh, copper, silver, white. What's that? Don't have it. I thought I had gold. I was going to dust it with some gold Should before I put the green on. Put the cap? Uh, that's not translucent. That's pretty opaque. Yeah. You got some metallic over here. Yes, different stuff. <laughs> How are the other kitties doing? Kitties are pretty wonderful. <laughs> Two kitties. We have three. We have four now. I've never mixed these inks before. I'm wondering if I can mix pearl and green and yellow and make a color. All right. I want to lighten this up. Like, I want it to be a brighter green. You know, I'm going to do one more technique before I get to the airbrush. I'm going to do some sponging. I'm going to make it spongy. Return from return home from making Latvian gingerbread cookies. Wish I could share them. Awesome. Latvian gingerbread? That's, that's Ezekiel. Isn't Latvia where Dr. Doom is in charge of? So that's Latveria, and I think they made that up. What are Latvian gingerbread cookies like? Delicious. <laughs> I bet they are delicious. Okay, bold move. Bold move, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. What is that from? I've been quoting that for years, and I completely forget what it's from. Anybody? Bold move, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. Ezekiel says they're super crispy. Okay. What? I'll see if I could just freeze the paint like this. I would. I like it this bright. A little more brightness, a little more pop on there. Now this is gonna darken down as it dries. So about once a week, week and a half, I have to make a new bottle this size of black. To the point of now I make three gallons of black at a time and just refill the bottle. 
this bottle of yellow had la has lasted me about a year and a half because um, I just don't use a lot of yellow. A lot of people have a favorite color. I have a least favorite color. It's yellow. It's the color of urine and the sun. There wasn't any more to that. That's all I was saying. And because I don't use it very often, this tip is a little clogged. When I say a little clogged, I mean I'm having to dig crud out of it. You guys think you're gonna watch me paint a mask, but you're gonna spend 10 minutes watching me pull this giant booger out of this bottle lid. Like sometimes you think you're gonna watch me airbrush, and instead you watch me clean an airbrush. Okay, put some yellow, straight yellow down the counter here. Because, yeah, gross, straight yellow. Because I'm going to go back and I'm going to paint some green over this. And I think the yellow underneath, but the green is going to be an ink. The yellow underneath is going to let it really pop. And I'm going to sponge it on because I like the blockiness of the sponge and also the sponge. Uh, that technique lends itself the way that uh, cartoons are animated. And since this character is based off of a cartoon, so yeah, it's a little yellow. But, you know, I would definitely say the Grinch is like a yellow olive green. When we started this, it was a raw latex orc mask, you know? Okay. I'm gonna, I raised it up on this can just to get a little bit more height. That's not going to work. I'm punching it with a thing, thing, thong. There we go. Now we're getting the yellow on. What's that? When Shannon and I are in here together, that is when the cats can't stand it. If I'm in here, the cats really don't care. But if we're both in here, they're like, what's going on in here? Why aren't, why aren't we in here? Let's be in here. I don't mind them coming in the shop every now and then because they do help with mice and rodents. I live very, very much in the country. Okay, so yeah, so you can see he is very yellow right now, which is good. That's what we want. We want him to be yellow. That's perfectly fine for a dried up. This went on a little too bright, but now it's darkening down to exactly where we want it.
And now, because of who I am as a person, I'm going to take a great risk and possibly screw up this paint job. When really, I could at this point do the teeth, call it done. Am I going to do that? <laughs> I've never mixed a color in with my pearl before either. This pearlescent look. Never done that. A little yellow in there. Put a little green in there. You'll know every time I pour it off a little bit, I put the lid right back on. I don't want to knock over these and have them spill. And if you have two lids open, which lid do you put on first? Whichever one would be the more expensive spill. Now I'm really liking how that looks in the jar. <laughs> Exciting. So, all right. Let's find this whole herbrisk. And I am going to spray it down here first and just see what it does. Because not only do I want it to be, yeah, it has to be translucent. I have to know it's translucent or not. Here we go. This is adding a little bit of a sheen to it. It's pearlized, so it is a uh, pearlescent. And it's a nice light yellow green. Uh, 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 uh. I'm loving it. And it's translucent enough where all of my shading is still staying. It's still it's still in there. All right, so I've got that. Uh, boy, that turned out beautiful. I will mix pearlescent yellow and green together again one day. Boy, if I, when I have some fish men to paint and I got some coming up later, not later tonight, but later in my life. Um, and when I say my life, it sounds like I mean a long, long time from now. No, you'll see something fishy from me at Transworld. No. We'll be right back. Now turn my air filters on, guys. Okay, it was getting a little foggy in here, so my wife had me turn on my air filters. I got two grizzly air scrubbers up in the roof, and they actually do do a wonderful job. Let me pull this over here to you so you guys can see what's happening now with that paint. Okay, now I'm going to prep the other airbrush. This one, do some shading detail. So, Scary Mary, question for you Did you do any scenic painting this year? If I recall, you did a lot of good scenic painting uh, for your haunted house.
So now I have a nice clean airbrush cup. Uh, I had some dark brown or whatever. I'm not a big airbrush cleaner. I kind of fix it as it comes. Hello from Amarillo. Hello, Amarillo. Yeah. All right, and I got a nice translucent dark green here in the airbrush. And I'm dialing my airbrush in so I can just do some nice shading. nice dark green to give me that separation again. Punching up so that even though it's all green, it's got some depth, it's not all one color. And those lines in here I'm going to put them back in too. Yes, that's a crawdad for us. Yeah. I've been following you for a couple of years, and that's how long I've been dabbling. How many years do you have under your belt? Well, I've been acting in haunted houses for 33 years. This was my 33rd haunt season this year, and I've been making props and stuff, let's say, 30 years. So, I suppose I've been doing it a while. All right, so. Alexa, what time is it? It's 10 p.m. It's 10 p.m.? Yeah. All right. Okay. I'm going to paint the teeth, and I'm good. I clean the airbrush so well, I don't mind pouring the rest of this green right back in the bottle. I know I got the airbrush good and clean before it went in there. And a little bit of airbrush in there, paint in there will gunk it up. So I'm just spraying it out to where it's coming up. All right. Now, I'm gonna grab some hand brushes uh, and my color.
old, but I'm not that old. <laughs> okay. This, this mauve color, or whatever it is, is kind of my go-to color for all gums. Uh, I'm about to change all my colors up. It's just a time of year for me to do that. I tend to pick about 13 colors for the year. And I stick with those, kind of like, like a fashion house picks fabrics, you know. about to repick all of my colors for the year which to me is exciting you know I'm gonna be staring at these guys for months we're uh, we're getting there guys Putting just a hint of yellow into this white for my tooth color. And I'll do one pass with this, and then I'll do a pass with straight white. I'm not touching any of that gum color that I just put on. I'm leaving a little barrier of of the deep base that I got on here. And these I actually am painting. I'm not dry brushing. I'm loading my brush up pretty good. I don't want it to drip. Like the biggest sin that you can do while painting teeth is allowing your tooth color to drip down into the gums. I don't want that. For synergy says isn't good. Uh, Jesus says if that thing came from my iPad on Christmas Eve, not only take all of my presents, I'd help him load his stuff. Thank you. Alright, so I have to get what's on the teeth right now dry. So that I can do one more layer of that. Back to my old trusty heat gun. Even that white is darkening up. It's becoming more translucent. I'm seeing that tooth color underneath of it. Again, with the same color, I'm just strengthening what's on there. to that. Hello, Al Driver. Pure white now, no yellow in it at all. When I'm hitting the teeth, I'm hitting even less of the teeth. About half of them. 
This is going to make a nice tartar ring at the bottom of tooth and make them a little more believable. I'm going to do a little something because I think it needs it. I'm going to mix a little bit of black and green ink and hit the shading a little bit harder. Right now, look at that. That's my grouch. He's not a Grinch. It's a grouch. Let's, uh, let's mix up a little bit more, more ink. Gotta grab the black. I really like that pearlescent I did to it. I think that really helped the pearlescent ink that I put on there, which I've never mixed that before, so that was nice. spray the green out of this mostly a little bit in there now the black I don't want a lot of black I'm gonna put a little bit of black in this I see some areas I want to separate a little more Got a few drops of black in there. Not a lot. I'm just going to stir it up with something. like it needed that line right down the center there. Do another little drop of black. I don't think I'm getting enough darkness. problem with working on your table as your palette is that I set this clean tool down so I could use it again and I set it in a puddle of paint. I am your friend, I am not your smart friend. So tonight guys, I didn't do anything advanced, okay? Um, I took an existing latex mask, I added to it with contact cement and paper towels, and I painted it. I didn't even have to use an airbrush tonight. I just like using an airbrush. Okay, that's a good color. Hi, I'm a pretty new subscriber here and have air acid for just two years. Your channel has been super interesting and helpful. Any advice you can give on how to learn more about the horse industry? Okay. Well, if you want to learn more about the industry, then, you know, uh, go to some industry events if you can. Um, go, go to uh, uh, Midwest Haunters Convention. Go to Trans World. Those shows have a lot of... Uh, 
you know, a lot of people are haunters there. Um, join Haunters Hangout on uh, Facebook. That is a great resource for folks who want to make things or just general haunt stuff. Um, are you a maker more or an actor more? Which one? Which one is your proclivity? Scare actors for two years. And uh, don't watch horror movies to get good at haunted house acting. Watch a nature documentary. Um, people will think it's cool if you move like Michael Myers but they won't feel like one of Michael Myers' victims. If you can move like you are a lion, they will feel like an antelope. Um, and that's a pretty important and cool thing to be able to do to folks. guys I painted a Grinch uh, a grouch I painted a grouch no Grinches here um, you know I wanted him to have bigger teeth I wanted him to uh, I'll put hair on him tomorrow but I wanted him to be able to be a little bit ferocious First thing you'll notice if he comes at you from the dark is the teeth. You know, that's why they're white. That's why they pop. And then you'll notice, you know, the face shape. That's why getting this shape and this nose is pretty important to portray his character. So, yeah, there's that. Um, we have a grouch. And I say unto you all, thanks for hanging out with me tonight, and go make stuff. <laughs>